All right, JP, obviously a pretty emotional, crazy game, but uh, talk about your game and then obviously the game winner. Um, well, anytime I'm out there, I just try and play as hard as I can and uh, take open shots when they're there. Um, missed a few early on, um, but just tried to stay confident, stay aggressive, and when I got an open look, just tried to do what I do every day in workouts and, and shoot it the way I shoot it in those. So, uh, and that's kind of what happened on that corner three. Biaris made a good drive. Uh, my guy helped up the floor. He made a great pass. And uh, it was just like I was in the gym on my own. So, What did Coach say before we move, uh, when we called the timeout? You know, what did Coach say? What did he draw up? Uh, we drew up a play, um, and then they went out. They came out, and they showed a 2-3 zone. Uh, so that kind of got us discombobulated a little bit. Um, and then we got the ball to be artist with, I think it was seven on the shot clock. And he drove hard, like I said, and my guy helped, and he found me. So. Was there any sort of yelling like you did at Manhattan? No, not really, not really. There was, uh, there was still time left, so I was just trying to tell the guys, hey, we got to finish it. You know, there's still, five, I think they had 5.8 on the clock. Um, and Eugene German is a terrific player. I think he had 23 maybe in the second half. Um, just really, really talented. And so, you know, when there's still time left, he's still got a chance. So uh, I was just trying to get the guys to lock in and, and for those last five seconds and get a stop. We were up 18. Yeah. Come down. You have to make the the game winner. But what what can you learn from this and tell the guys, knowing that you were up by that much? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're up by 18, it's it's easy to kind of let your foot off the gas. And you know what we got to learn going forward is no lead is safe, especially when they've got a, a player as explosive as German is on the other side. Um, and so what we just have to do is look at the film and see what we did to get the 18 point lead and then keep reiterating those things that we did to get that lead and then keep doing those no matter what the score is, every single possession. So, uh, Can you just talk a little bit about Brandon and Mike? Uh, both had 20, kind of led the offense and kind of sparked when, yeah. when it was a back and forth battle there towards the end. Just kind of talk about their games. Yeah, those guys are so talented. Um, they can just they can get a shot whenever they whenever they want to. Um, they can score at all three levels, and they're they're supremely confident. And those guys were great for us tonight, um, and they were a big reason why we got out to that lead. And, and they were a big reason down the stretch. They hit some big shots uh, when Northern had some momentum to kind of uh, stave them off just a little bit. So. Uh, I guess not totally on this game, but next game is your senior game. It's your final game here at yeah. University Arena. What do you think the emotions are going to be like? Man, uh, it's hard to believe, first of all. It uh, feels like I just yesterday I got to campus and was moving into the dorm, and, and now it's my last home game here at Reed Fieldhouse. Um, I'm sure it'll be emotional before and after, uh, but once the ball gets tipped up, you know, we got a job to do. We got a game that we got to go in. We've got to lock in on scouting report and play hard. So before and after, yeah, it'll definitely be really emotional, probably something that um, I've never experienced before, but then once the ball goes up, it's time to play. All right, Coach, obviously an exciting game. Just a first opening statement about the game. Well, it was a heck of a game. Um, you know, I'm really proud of the guys uh, you know, for pulling it out. It's, uh, um, you know, this this league is so, I mean, it's every night, you know, and it's, and it's another team. And, you know, every one of them has their own, it's its own drama. You know, and Eugene German didn't play the first half, you know, and then comes in in the second half and gets up 20 shots, you know, and next closest on their team was nine. You know, he he, he only played half the game. So, um, you know, and, and you can see why he's the leading scorer in the league. He's ultra aggressive. And, and uh, one of the things that probably helped him is he was good and rested. Uh, the guys went at it um, pretty good on both teams in the first half. And uh, Eugene German came in and looked looked refreshed and, and ready to go, and, and he took it at us. But, you know, our guys made some shots, made some big shots, um, you know, and enough to, enough to uh, secure the dub. You know, we got enough stops, um, but that, that was a, that's a tough game. That's a tough team to play against. Obviously, they were leading the MAC West coming in. Uh, what did you tell your team kind of in that timeout before Jared hit the three? Well, we had talked about the fact that, um, you know, that there was, I don't know how much they heard me. Um, it, we had gone with a small lineup and, uh, and we had Jared actually at the four. I just, my thought there was that if we could put another shooter out on the court, 
it would stretch out the court a little bit more and allow uh, we we had a set play on um, to allow Mike to drive the ball and with Jared out there and Beardis out there and the way Brandon's been shooting the ball from three I, th I thought we had a chance to uh, spread the floor out a little bit um, but when they came out um, in the zone um, we had enough time to adjust and we ran. Uh, almost the exact same play. Um, we just kind of switched positions, but we ran almost the exact same play that Jared hit the three-pointer on um, when we beat Manhattan earlier in the year uh, with a couple of seconds to go or say whatever it was. You know, and so that was the guys got to it. Um, and it didn't exactly work the way we had planned, but they got to it uh, eventually. And uh, that's a senior. That's a senior knocking down a big shot. Uh, what did you tell your team? What do you? What can you learn from this team after being up 18 and then Northern Illinois kind of battling back and making it close here at the end? Well, we just. I mean, the one thing we talked about was that the fact that you know you never know what stroke. We've lost games before in three and four minutes. There's been plenty of times where I've come into here or any post game and said, "Well, we lost that game in a three minute stretch or four minute stretch." You know, and in this game here, we won it during a th probably a four minute stretch. You know, we kind of grinded out the first half and slowly chipped away and, and went in up eight, 10, whatever that was. Um, but then we had that stretch in the second half where we played really, really well and took the lead up to 18 and had some great possessions offensively and defensively. And that was a stretch right there, you, you know, and, and um, you know, some of, some of our defense was not terrible. I mean, you can play good defense and a great player can beat you. You know, some of it was bad, but uh, some of it we were right there and it's just Eugene German um, doing what he does, you know. And so um, it was it was that stretch. I wanted them to feel good about the fact that about the fact that we it was a four minute stretch that won it for us, not necessarily a four minute stretch that lost us that lost it for us in the uh, as in the past, you know. And we just kind of grinded away possessions. Um, I didn't care for exactly the way we started the second half. Called a pretty quick timeout. Um, because we had turned the ball over again a couple of times and we just get careless with it. Fundamentals aren't where I want them to be still. Um, but, but uh, um, you know, for the most part, though, I was, I was really pleased with our effort. Went a little dry. Went a little dry a couple of times, you know, and, and, when, and you know, when you got Eugene German out there, that's not a good, that's not, that's recipe for disaster because he can score in a hurry. And if you go dry during a stretch, you know, we talked, one of the things we talked about was trying to get to the free throw line more too. You know, stop, stop taking as many jump shots, see if we can't get to the rim some. Uh, kind of unrelated from this game, but uh, final home game is on Tuesday and it's senior night. Uh, we'll be celebrating Jared and Dita. Just kind of talk about their impact on this program and on this team. Yeah, I mean, Dita and Jared, um, I mean, it's going to be really, really, I'll have a hard time getting through this, uh, talking about it with those two guys because uh, they are the epitome of Broncos. You know, what we think of, you know, we ask guys to be really hard workers, beasts on the court, and then gentlemen off of the court. Um, that's exactly what these two guys are. Um, they've worked their tails off, uh, off the court, or excuse me, on the court. And then they're both academic all Mac uh, guys uh, as well. Great students. Deed has already graduated, you know, and Jared's got, get, getting ready to graduate. And so um, they're both outstanding there. And then in both situations, you know, we're talking about guys that in their senior year are coming off the bench. And you would never know it. You know, you, you would never know it. their enthusiasm has been incredible. Um, they just want to win. That's all they care about is the team. And, and um, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, in professional circles, you hear people say they're great locker room guys, you know, and I, I can't think of two better guys um, to be able to, to be seniors in this. We have an incredibly young team. And for our two seniors to be our two most unselfish players, uh, is massive. Um, if we had two selfish seniors uh, in this situation with a young group behind them, that would have been that could have been a, that could have been a real trouble, um, a, a real trouble for us. But to have these two guys um, defer, understand, just think about team, just talk about team, um, just work towards team, has been 
has been huge for us. Their legacy, I mean, I will refer to those guys for as long as I coach here. I mean, we, I mean we're going to get to be 10 years down the road, and I'll be talking about Dieter Kongschwell and Jared Prinny and what kind of players they were for us and what kind of people they were for us. All right. Thanks, Coach. Oh, you got one. Sorry. Uh, I wanted to talk about the three-point shooting. The team was 12 and 19 from beyond the arc. Was that a focus coming into the game of getting up three-point shots, or was that just sort of uh, reading and adjusting to their defense? That was more of, a, of an adjustment. It, you know, it was a matter of being unselfish, you know, and taking, passing up good shots for great shots. You know, some of the threes were checked, but, but um, you know, and were, were tightly guarded. But for the most part, it was just sharing the ball and, and finding the wide open guy. And it happened to be from there. Um, we hit 12 threes in this game. I think we hit 12 in the last one against Ball State as well. We've been shooting the ball well. We're one of the best three point shooting teams in the league. If we could just not turn over the frickin' basketball and take care of it more, um, we're really good. I mean, we're towards the top of the league in three point field goal percentage and in field goal percentage overall. Um, we're, we're a good shooting team. Um, we just, we just make some crazy decisions. Again, some of it's our immaturity um, and youth. Um, but if we if we could just take care of the ball better, um, we, we got a chance to be a really good offensive basketball team. And then you talked about the final offensive sequence, but then uh, when there was 5.8 seconds left, they take the timeout. Um, was the plan to foul or in? German kind of threw that off by heaving it from half court, or was the plan to just sort of let that play out? No, the plan was definitely to foul. Um, we, the only thing that they did a little different, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the only thing that they did a little different was that they ran the baseline, and then th I think they thought somebody was going to be on the ball. Um, we didn't put anybody on the ball, um, and that's it. We would have if there had been like a couple of seconds left, um, but not with five. I, I, I don't. I didn't like the whole idea of them leaving them open, driving up the court, uh, um, you know. So um, we backed off just a little bit, and then we talked about them, uh, you know, when they, after they got it in and maybe taking a dribble, maybe two, you know, but we didn't want more than a couple of seconds to go off the clock before we fouled them. I even told the referees ahead of time, um, you know, they're normally the refs will look at you and say, are you trying to foul her or not? And, um, and I told them, yeah, we're going to foul here. And uh, as soon as he put one dribble on the floor, Ralph was coming up, but he went into his motion for shooting, you know, and Ralph kind of backed off at that point in time and, and um, you know, thankfully he missed it. But, yeah, we were going to foul the whole time. Um, and then, uh, obviously, Michael Flowers and uh, Brandon Johnson both had 20 points today. Um, how big is that to have your two biggest performers um, able to, to – perform at that consistency that they did today? Yeah, it's huge, you know, and I, I, I think one of the things that both of them did uh, that I was probably as happy with as anything is they kept their head. They, you know, it's been frustrating for them uh, during this five-game losing streak. And, you know, we've been battling a lot of a lot of little things, uh, injuries and flu. We've got half the team with the flu bug right now, including myself. And, um, and, and, uh, and so... Um, there's been it's been frustrating, and so for those guys to keep their heads, um, especially when they were coming back on us, for, and and to get good possessions, work on balance, um, I, I thought was was huge for us.